Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to part three of the rock, paper, scissors tutorial. In this video, we're going to wrap things up. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. If you have any questions or concerns, I'll be happy to respond. Now, let's open up the file that we created in the last video. One thing that I did add to the UPIC function was this your choice, and that's because we're going to be returning something back to this function. Now, let's create the three buttons. Here we created the variables for our buttons, but we didn't create the actual buttons. We're going to create them inside the play function. Now let's bring in the three variable names with our global keyword here. So let's just type in the name of our buttons. And now let's actually create the buttons. To do that, we're going to call on the button class. And inside these brackets, the first parameter is always going to be the name of your window. Ours is called root. We called it root when we created an instance of TK here. That's going to be the first parameter. Next, we want there to be an image on this button. So what we're going to type in is going to be image and the name of our photo. In this case, it's our hand photo because we stored the our hand image into this our hand photo variable. Next, we want something to happen when the user clicks this button. We want to call on this upick function. To do that, we're going to use command equals lambda. And now we can call the function here. And inside these brackets, let's send over a string. And this one is going to be rock. We're going to do the same thing for the rest of our buttons. Now we actually want to place these buttons on our window. To do that, we're going to type in the name of the button and we're going to call on the grid method. And inside these brackets, we're going to tell the computer where we want these buttons to be located at. We're going to say row zero, column zero. For our P hand button, we want it to be right next to our R hand button. So we're going to say row equals zero, column equals one. This one's going to be column equals two, so they're going to be right next to each other. Now let's make a function call to play, but let's comment these out because it's going to give us an error if we don't because we haven't completed them yet. So far, this is all we have. So we, if we click this, nothing's going to happen. All right, let's complete the rest of our functions. For computer pick, let's create a variable, call it choice, and let's call on random, which we imported at the beginning of the project here. And let's call on the choice function, which is a built-in function in Python, and let's create a list inside here with three strings, rock, paper, and scissors. And let's return this variable. 
for you pick we're gonna bring in the click variable that we created at the beginning here and we're also going to make a function call to computer pick so what this is doing is computer pick is going to return a random string whether it's rock paper scissors we're going to grab that string and we're going to store it in comp pick here Now the rest of the code, I'm actually just gonna copy and paste it because I think it's a lot of code for me to type up in this video, but I'll go over it line by line. Here we have a if statement, it says if click is equal to true, and we know that click is equal to true because we initialized it to true here. If click is equal to true, then we create another if statement within this if statement, and this one says if your choice is equal to rock. The way we got that was by clicking on the R hand button. So if we click on the R hand button, we're gonna send over this string that says rock through our upick function. Our upick function is gonna pick it up and it's gonna store it in your choice. So if your choice is equal to rock, then we want that button, in this case it's the R hand button, to turn into the rock photo. This accounts for our selection now we created three more if statements within this if statement that accounts for what the computer is going to pick if the computer chooses rock and remember comp pick was the function call that we made to computer pick which has the random string with whether it's rock paper scissors we started in comp pick so if comp pick equals to rock we want the p hand button to turn into the rock photo and the s hand button to turn into the tie photo because rock versus rock is a tie. We then set click to false. I'll explain why in a minute. But if the computer doesn't click rock, if the computer chooses paper, then we want the P hand button not to turn into the rock photo, but to turn into the paper photo. And we want the S hand button to turn into the lose photo because rock versus paper is a lose for us. We set click to false. This other else statement is checking to see if the computer chooses scissors, but we don't actually have to include if comp pick equals scissors, because here we already accounted for if the computer chooses rock. This is if the computer chooses paper, the only thing that's left is scissors, so we don't actually have to include that there. If the computer chooses scissors, then we want the P hand button to turn into the scissors photo and the S hand button to turn into the win photo because rock beats scissors so we win of course we set click to false now this lf statement is actually not connected to neither of these three if statements here this lf statement is connected to our choice so if your choice is not rock if your choice is paper then we want the p hand button to turn into the paper photo that accounts for us now we have to account for the computer and once again, these three if statements account for the computer. We start with if the computer chooses rock, we want the R hand button to turn into the rock photo. And we want the S hand button to turn into the win photo because paper beats rock. We set click to false. If the computer chooses paper, we want the R hand button to turn into the paper photo and the S hand button to turn into the tie photo because paper versus paper is a tie. Set click to false. If the computer chooses scissors, our hand button turns into scissors photo and the S hand button turns into the lose photo because paper versus scissors, we lose. We set click to false. And this final LF statement here accounts for our choice. So we already counted for rock and paper. This is for scissors. If we click on that particular button, we want the S hand button to turn into the scissors photo and this is beginning to turn into a pattern of course these three if statements account for the computer pick in that particular of course these three if statements account for what the computer is going to choose now this else statement here is connected neither to the computer pick nor your choice 
that else statement is connected to the very first if statement. Now, at the beginning of the game, we know that click is equal to true. This code is going to execute. It doesn't matter whether you win or you lose. We're going to set to click false at the end of every game. Now, when you decide to click on any of the buttons at that point, click is going to be equal to false. So the code is going to check this here. If click is equal to true at that point, click is equal to false. So it's not going to execute any of this code. It's going to go right down to this else statement here and then it's going to execute this code. So it's going to read if your choice is equal to rock or your choice is equal to paper or your choice is equal to scissors, which you can't see on the screen. So it doesn't matter which one of these you pick. It doesn't matter which one of the buttons you click. It's going to turn the R hand button into the R hand photo the P hand button into the P hand photo and the S hand button into the S hand photo. Basically, it's going to reset the game and it's going to set click to true. Now, the next time you click on the buttons again, it's going to start here again. It's going to see is click equals to true at that point. It is equal to true. So it's going to execute this code once again, and it's just going to keep doing this over and over. So you can basically keep Play the game as many times as you want all right now let's actually run it so you can see what i'm talking about all right so when we click on the r hand button this is going to turn into a rock this is going to turn into whether rock paper scissors we don't know and this is going to say whether we win we lose or we tie in this case it was a tie we want to be paper we click on the paper button we win let's be scissors and it doesn't matter on which button we click it's just going to reset back to this let's be rock paper scissors that's going to wrap it up for this video guys i hope you guys learned a thing or two and i'll see you guys in the next one